In this video, we're going to look at how you can use trigonometry to calculate the area of a triangle. It's going to build upon some of the ideas from these two previous videos. If you haven't already done so, I'd therefore recommend you check those out first. I'll put links to both of these in this video's description. You're probably already comfortable finding the area of some basic triangles like these two here. For the one on the left, we do area equals one half multiplied by the base, so that's eight centimeters, multiplied by the perpendicular height, so that's six centimeters. And if you did this, you get 24 centimeters squared. For the question on the right hand side, we do one half multiplied by the base, so that's 10, multiplied by the height, that's 12, and then if you did this, you'd end up with 60 centimeters squared. Now, in both of these questions, there was also some additional information that we didn't need. On the left one, we had 10 centimeters, and on the right one, we had 13. Both of these are sloped heights, but we don't need the sloped height when finding the area of a triangle, we want the perpendicular height, the one that makes a right angle to the base. Now let's have a look at a trickier triangle, so this one here. For this one we've been given some information, but not the perpendicular height. You can see we have the base here at 18 centimeters, we have the sloped height at 16 centimeters, but the perpendicular height would be this one here. Now it is still possible to find the area of the triangle using this information. We're going to take a closer look at this right angle triangle here. Since this triangle is a right angle triangle, we can use trigonometry to find the missing information. If we label on the height the one we're trying to find as x, and then begin to label the triangle using Sokotoa. So the x is opposite the angle in the question, so we'll label that as O, the 16 is opposite the right angle, so that must be the hypotenuse, so H, and the other side is next to the angle, so that's the adjacent. Now we have the hypotenuse and we're trying to find the opposite, so we need to use sine. So if we write down sine of the angle, so sine 30, equals the opposite, which is x, divided by the hypotenuse, so divide by 16. We can solve this one by multiplying both sides by 16. This will give us 16 sine 30 is equal to x. And you can either use your calculator to work this out, or you may know that sine 30 is actually equal to 1 half. So we have 16 multiplied by 1 half to give us an x value of 8 centimeters. So the height of this triangle was actually 8 centimeters, and we used trigonometry to find it. So we can write 8 centimeters onto the height, and we're now able to work out the area. So we can do area equals one half multiplied by the base, so that's 18, and then multiplied by the perpendicular height, which is eight. And if you work this out, you end up with 72 centimeters squared. Now we can use this technique to find the area of any triangle if we're given that information. Let's have a look at a more general example. So if we take a triangle that looks like this one, and we're going to label the sides this time in the same way we did for the sine and cosine rule. So we're going to label the sides as A, B, and C, and the angles that are opposite those, capital A, capital B, and capital C. Now if you compare this triangle to the one in the example, you can see we didn't have the capital A, we didn't have the capital B, and we also didn't have the lowercase c. We just had the lowercase a, the lowercase b, and the capital C. So if we now draw in the perpendicular height once again, and take a closer look at this triangle. We wanted to find the height, which was this one here, and we did this by taking the hypotenuse, which was b, and we multiplied this by the sine of the angle in the question, which in this case was c. If you did b multiplied by sine c, you could just write that as b sine c. So the height of this triangle will always be b sine c. So if we were to work out the area of this triangle now, we would do one half multiplied by the base, which is a, and then multiplied by the perpendicular height, which is b sine c. And if you multiply all of these together, we end up with this formula here. The area equals one half a b sine c. And using this formula, we can find the area of any triangle using trigonometry, as long as we're given this information. Notice how the information required is one of the angles, so in our case it was C, and then the two sides that go together to make that angle, so A and B. If you look at our triangle, you can see we don't need that blue side on the left hand side, and we also don't need either of the other two angles. So if we're going to use this technique to find the area of a triangle, we need two sides and the angle that's in between them. Let's have a look at how we can do this with an example. So for this triangle here, we're looking for two sides and the angle in between them. You can see we actually have all three of the sides, but we only have one of the angles. So we need this angle here and the two sides that are either side of it, so the nine and the six, but we don't need the 8.1 over here. So if we were going to label these, the nine centimeters and the six centimeters would be our lowercase a and lowercase b, and the angle that's in between them would be the capital C. We then just substitute those values into the formula. 
So to find the area of this triangle, we would do 1 half multiplied by a, which is 9, multiplied by b, which is 6, and multiplied by sine of capital C, so sine of 62. You can type this straight into your calculator, and it will give you this value here. And we might want to round that off to something sensible. Let's go for one decimal place, so 23.8 centimeters squared. Let's try a second example. So once again, we're looking for an angle and the two sides that are either side of it. So the angle we're given is 101 degrees here, and the two sides that are either side of this are the 7.1 and the 7.2. So we don't need the 11.0. So if we're going to label these, the 7.1 and 7.2 must be the A and B, and the 101 must be the capital C. So then we go for the formula, area equals 1 half multiplied by A, so that's 7.1, and multiplied by B, so that's 7.2, and multiplied by the sine of capital C, so the sine of 101. If you type this into your calculator, you'll end up with this number here. And let's round that off again to one decimal place, so 25.1 centimeters squared. Now we're going to look at a series of even trickier problems using this technique. It's actually very rare in an exam question for them to give you a triangle and just say find the area. This topic is very often embedded in more complex questions. Let's have a look at some of those now. So if we take this triangle here, You'll notice I've only given one of the sides this time, but I am going to tell you the area. The area of the triangle is 95 centimeters squared, and we're going to try and find the side AC. Let's first of all label on the side we're trying to find AC as X. Now, if we're going to use the area of the triangle formula, we need an angle and the two sides either side of it. So we're going to use this 81, and the sides either side of that angle are the 6 and the X. Next, we're going to label these as A, B, and C. However, if you notice on the outside of the triangle, we've got capital A, capital B, and capital C, but those labels represent the corners of the triangle and not the angles or the sides, so they may cause some confusion. So just like we did in the cosine rule video, I'm just going to cover those up for now so that I don't get confused when I label. So I'm now going to label the sides as lowercase a and lowercase b, and then the angle in between them as capital C. So if I were to use this to find the area of the triangle, I would do 1 half multiplied by a, so 6, multiplied by b, and that's x this time, and then multiplied by sine of 81. But I know the area of this triangle, I've been told it's 95 centimeters squared, so when I work this out, it must be equal to 95. Now we just have an equation to solve to try and find the value of x. If you do half of 6, well that's 3, and then if you multiply this by sine 81, that's 3 sine 81. So on the left hand side we have 3 sine 81, multiplied by x, which you could write as 3 sine 81 lots of x. And the right hand side is 95. To find the value of x now, we could just divide both sides by 3 sine 81. On the left, this will give us x, and on the right, we've got 95, and we must divide this by 3 sine 81. If you type this into your calculator, you'll get this value here. So x will be 32.1 centimeters. Now let's try another. So for this question here, I'm going to tell you the area again. The area for this one's going to be 37 centimeters squared. But now I'm going to challenge you to find an angle. We're going to find the obtuse angle ABC. So let's start by labeling on ABC as X, that's this angle here. Then we need to check if we've got two sides and the angle in between them, and indeed we do. We have the two sides here, 11 and 7, and the angle in between those is X, the one we're trying to find. So now we can label these with A, B, and C, but once again we have those annoying capital letters on the outside, so I'm just going to cover those up for the moment. And then we can label the sides 11 and 7 as A and B, and the X, which is the angle, is capital C. Then if we go ahead and use the formula, the formula is 1 half multiplied by A, which is 11, multiplied by B, which is 7, and then multiplied by sine of C. But we don't know C this time, C was our X, so it's multiplied by sine of X. And this is the area of the triangle, but we do know the area of the triangle, that's 37 centimeters squared. Now we just have another equation to solve to find x. If you type this bit into your calculator or work it out, you get 38.5. So on the left side, we have 38.5 lots of sine x, and this is going to equal 37. Then we could divide both sides by 38.5. This will mean on the left hand side, we have sine of x, and on the right hand side, we've got 37, but we divided this by 38.5. So if we keep the left hand side as sine of x and work out the right hand side using your calculator, you get this number here. You can now find x using the inverse sine button. So x would equal the inverse sine of this number, which will give us a value of x equals 73.95 degrees. 
So if x was 73.95 degrees, the area of ABC would indeed be 37 centimeters squared. However, there is some important information we've been told in this question. It does say to find the obtuse angle ABC. Our angle that we've got is 73.95, which is less than 90, therefore it's acute. So there must be another possibility for this angle. Now if you think back to the video on the sine rule, there was the example of the ambiguous case, where there were two possible angles that made sense for that triangle. If you found one of them to find the other one, you subtracted that angle from 180, and that's what we need to do in this case. So to find the obtuse value that would work for this triangle, we would subtract 73.95 from 180. And this gives you the actual answer of 106 degrees. As mentioned earlier, this topic is often embedded in more complex questions. I'm going to show you one such example now. So here we have a sector of a circle with center O. And we've been asked to calculate the area of the shaded region. To do this, we're first of all going to calculate the area of the whole sector, using the formula for area of a sector. So to find the sector area, we would do the angle for the sector, which is theta, divided by 360, multiplied by pi, and multiplied by radius squared. Now we do have all of this information in this question. The angle theta is 135, and the radius for this sector is 7, so we can replace the r with 7 squared. You can type this straight into your calculator, and you'll get this value here. Now this gives us the area of the entire sector, but we're after the area of the shaded region, so we need to subtract from this the area of that white triangle. And we know how to find the area of this triangle using the formula half a b sine c. Since this is a sector, the line OA, which is a radius, must be the same length as the line OB, that's also a radius, so we can mark that on at 7 centimeters. Then we can label the triangle, so the two sides are the A and B, they're both 7 centimeters, and the angle in between them is the capital C, so 135. So to find the area of the triangle, we would do 1 half, multiplied by A, which is 7, multiplied by B, which is also 7, and multiplied by the sine of C, so sine of 135. If you use your calculator, you'll find the area of the triangle is equal to this number here. So to find the shaded region, all we need to do is the area of the whole sector, which is 57.7 and so on, subtract the area of this triangle, which is 17.3 and so on, and you'll end up with this number here, 40.4 centimeters squared. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next. Subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. Now go and try the exam questions in this video's description.